Frigg could very well be one of the best characters to come to Tower of Fantasy, and yet for some free to play players, she might be a massive waste of time and resources. And she's only around for 19 days, so pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, don't mess this up. The secret to Frigg lies in her frost resonance, which I'm sure a lot of you already knew, but later I'll explain why this also could be her fatal flaw. Now, if you're familiar with Nemesis, which you should be because I spent $300 on her, if you missed that video, go ahead and check it out. Frigg is basically the frost version of Nemesis. She's the only character in the game with frost resonance. This is extremely important because this increases frost attack by 15% and frost resistance by 25 percent you activate this effect by equipping two or more frost weapons this sets effect also works with weapons in the offhand slot so i'm sure you can already tell why this is a big deal later in the video we're going to talk about what weapons and characters you should be pairing with frig but what's so crucial about this is that right now we don't know if she's ever going to come back so if you don't get frig within the next 19 days you may never get your chance to get the frost resonance here in the global version of tower of fantasy and that might not seem like a big deal right now based on the characters that you currently have but in the future if they release a super powerful SSR character that just also happens to be a frost character well then you're definitely going to wish that you had Frigg now it's also possible that she could be replaced by a more powerful frost resonance character in the future but we're going to talk about that near the end of the video okay now besides the frost resonance what exactly does Frigg do now unlike Frigg's vault counterpart nemesis who plays the support role Frigg is actually in the DPS role. She's going to be dealing big damage, boys. There's actually a, a lot that's big about Frigg besides just her damage, okay? We're talking about her sword, boys. We're talking about her sword. Obviously, we're talking about the sword, and this is her second outfit, which looks absolutely incredible. But if we are talking about her DPS and her play style, you can see that she doesn't really specialize in either Shatter or charge except that she sort of can sometimes specialize in shatter in order to explain that though we have to explain her move set but overall she's a very fast paced sword user that sort of has some weight behind her swings and honestly her play style is pretty unique and super cool looking all right let's just jump into frigg's move set okay we have to start with the normal attack it's five hits in a row all of which deal damage with a minor knockback the third hit dealing a little bit more damage and on the fifth hit you're going to deal a ton of damage with a knockdown when Frigg is airborne or after jumping once you can initiate her aerial attacks called aerial discharge this is another set of five hits slowly increasing in damage as you progress with the fifth attack dealing much more damage than the first during your normal attacks if you press and hold on the normal attack button you can trigger the soaring slash you will lunge forward with a horizontal swipe this will launch the target into the air and frig will then meet them there dealing moderate amounts of damage you can also tap and hold your normal attack while airborne and this will initiate the helix slash this will cause frig to attack in a downward position dealing a small amount of damage for each hit and when upon landing will deal a massive amount of damage to all nearby targets frig also has a multi slash ability that you can initiate by attacking after a dodge as the name suggests frig will unleash multiple slashes at a set distance dealing damage to the target but what's really cool about frig is her skill called thimble winter Thim thimble win thimble winter what is what does that mean basically frig slashes the space around her dealing a massive amount of damage this can suspend and launch targets and also gives frig damage immunity during the duration of the skill but what's really cool about this skill is after the damage is dealt there is a frost domain that emerges in that circular area it lasts for 25 seconds and you can dodge as much as you want while you're within that area and it also grants frig the domain of frost which when you're inside that frost domain gives you 25 percent extra shatter when you're using a frost weapon so in this way you sort of can shatter with frig but you also can switch to another character like Merrill, who already has a high shatter value and also a frost weapon 
and this still will apply as long as you're within the frost domain her discharge ability called frigid fracture is also super powerful she's going to lunge forward and deal a massive amount of damage to opponents in a specific area and it also will launch those enemies into the air now that's everything you get with frig by just unlocking her by just having her okay including the frost resonance which is huge if you are able to get her to one star you then start to gain stacks called frostiness points every time you deal a certain amount of damage inside the frost domain that's triggered after her skill use you can get up to 10 stacks of these frostiness points with frig and when the frost domain ends after the 25 seconds she will deal a massive amount of damage that is multiplied by the number of stacks that she gained during that period afterwards she will slowly lose these stacks at one point every three seconds at two stars frig grants your weapon some bonus hp and at three stars you not only unlock that super cool outfit but you also can then gain up to 15 stacks of the frostiness points that we talked about before and on top of that when you use a frost weapons discharge ability within the frost domain it's also going to deal extra damage to all targets within that area at four stars frig is going to gain a really solid weapon attack buff things get really interesting at five stars because when you shatter a shield using frost weapons in the frost domain you will then freeze the target for two seconds and deal damage to that target equal to the number of frostiness points that you have and then at six stars frig gets a really solid frost attack buff when you get your 15 frost stacks and you're in the frost domain okay so now that we know what frig does is she good for free to play players well just like with any gotcha game it sort of depends on what characters you have or what characters you plan on investing in when you do finally obtain so for example if you're a free-to-play player and you already have a one or two star Meryl or a one or two star Subasa, or you plan on going all in in the long term on Subasa or Meryl then I think using your red nucleus on Frigg right now is pretty probably a really good strategy it's also worth noting that Coco is a frost character as well she does a ton of healing really solid charge value if you love what Coco does and you need some more damage and you're okay with going all in on frost then of course Frig could be a great option for you as well if you want an all frost team right now of course you're going to want Frig you obviously would then want to have Meryl and Subasa. and the cool thing about that is that Subasa has a really high charge value and Meryl has a really high shatter value which is really exceptional because Frig is not good at either of those things so this is a very well-rounded hit that you can build for free to play right now it's also worth noting that you'll have two DPS characters and one defense character with that build which is going to further increase your damage with the attack weapon resonance but let's say you're a player who only has one frost character right now and you are considering getting a frost team so you do plan on getting frig who should you pair her with well of course if the one character you have is Meryl then you're going to want your third character to be a charge character and conversely if the only character you have is Subasa then you're going to want to make your third weapon a shatter weapon this same applies for Coco if you plan on continuing to use her with Frigg as well you could do Frigg and Meryl with either Sumir or Zero or you could do Frigg Subasa and King or Huma or even Shiro or you could do Frigg with Coco and King or Huma or Shiro but the usefulness of Frigg in all of these combinations hinges on the fact that in the future we might possibly get a frost resonance character that is more powerful than Frigg eventually the CN version got Saki who is also a frost element with the frost resonance but unlike Frigg she has a very high shatter value and has the defense resonance I haven't personally played the CN version of Tower of Fantasy I have heard though that Saki is very good however if there's anything we've learned thus far in the global release it's that we really can't go off of the CN version as much as we thought we could so really I wouldn't bank on Saki coming out and overpowering Frigg in the near future now let's talk about those of you who went all in on Nemesis should you be getting Frigg honestly probably not if you went all in on Nemesis and you already started investing in her 
then you probably also are investing in Samir and going heavily in that direction. And it just wouldn't make sense to add Frigg into that team. It's better to focus on one element in this case, Volt, than to spread yourself and your resources thin, trying to level up a bunch of different elements and weapons and having a multitude of them. It's better to just get one set to six stars. And then if you want, you can branch out. But what about those of you who went all in on King? You love the fire elements and you want to build a team around flame. Well, then you might want to skip Frigg as well, because we already know that Cobalt B is coming to the global version of Tower of Fantasy. And apparently she will bring along with her the flame resonance. So if you want to go all in on flame, then save your red nucleus, skip Frigg and invest all of that red nucleus into cobalt b when she does come around but of course fomo is very powerful so if you want to grab frig this may be your only opportunity and i shouldn't have to say this but if you are a dolphin or a whale it's probably worth at least summoning her just in case you want to use her later with the understanding that we don't really know what the devs are up to in the global version and she could be replaced by a more powerful frost resonance in the future who knows if you made it all the way to the end of this video i hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton comment down below whether or not you got frig did you get lucky did you have to summon all the way up to pity i'd love to hear from you in the comments section below also if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a tower of fantasy video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i'll talk to you guys again soon peace